Hi everybody, I'm David Henry from Learning Christmas Lighting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a relay box to show you how to turn on and off your Christmas lights over DMX or RS-485 at your house. Now, you don't have to be technical to understand this. If you just follow along, it'll be pretty simple. So, the reason why you might want to build one of these is it can really save you time and save you money if you want to use some traditional style Christmas lights, the ones that you just plug into power and they light up within your animated display, but you might not need a lot of channels of control and so it doesn't make sense to buy one of those pre-made boxes that does around 16 channels. The good news is you can DIY it on Amazon and it's pretty inexpensive. In total, the materials for this were about $40 and I had some of it around. Now, let's dive into building this and you'll see below in the description everything that I use to build this particular box so you can build one yourself. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is get our box ready. Now, I had this box from uh, last year and I've got some cable glands pre-installed that I had used for actually lighting my Tune 2 sign. but. I have a different plan for this year, so we're just going to take that guy. Um, you'll want to ready your box and put any cable glands in it that you're going to need. We're going to focus on the functional specifics for this video, though. So I'm just taking my box, taking my lid off, getting it all ready to go. I'm just going to set that aside for a moment and uh, start to get my wires ready. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the wires we're going to need to make this work. Here I've got one of my outputs, and uh, it is a white cable, which is nice to keep them separate. This is going to be an output from the relay, so it's going to be turned on or off. And then I've got a short extension cord. This one's about three feet. You could use a longer one. Um, and that's going to give me my input and my output for one of the channels. I'm going to cut that in half. Then I also have a DMX cable. Again, um, you can use, especially if you're coming off of a Christmas light controller, you can totally use network cable and just wire it up for DMX on both your controller end and on this end. Not a big deal. So let's go ahead and start hooking up our power. Now, we've got our controller here. This is one that I bought on Amazon. The link is below, and it was about 20 bucks when I bought it. On this side, it's got the terminal block or Phoenix connector for the DMX. And on this side, it's got the bigger terminal block or Phoenix connector, which is for all the power. So this is for the power coming into it uh, to just to power the relay. And then also, it's going to have the power coming in to power the lights and then a switched power going out of it. And that's every other one of these uh, terminals here. Now, you'll want to look closely at the manual, okay? And when I bought mine on Amazon, the manual did not come in the box. It was only on the Amazon description page. I'll show it here. And the manual is what shows you what each terminal does. You'll be lost without it, okay? So that's very important as well. Now, let's go ahead and uh, start wiring things up. So I've got my first wire here. I'm just going to feed... Um, all my wires through after stripping them. So I'm just going to go ahead, strip all my wires here for my input and my two outputs. This uh, particular relay controller can do three outputs, but I only need two for my house. And so I'm going to go ahead, just strip the wires, get them inserted into the cable glands. And then... I'm going to start to get ready to start wiring up my terminal block. So I'm unplugging it here just to make it a little easier to work with to protect the relay. And I'm going to wire in very first the outputs of the lights to um, the, the switched signal. So this is the switched power that's going to be relay switched in this box. And it's going to go out to my lights. So I'm going to use standard wiring convention um, with my, my wires here. So this is going to be the black wire going to my outputs. Notice here in the diagram, the uh, 
the neutral this is showing. This says AC null is the neutral, uh, is passed through to each light. It doesn't go through this box at all. It, it just comes through the main power and, and goes straight to your lights. And then your ground, you can choose to send to your lights as well. Um, I'm going to show you, but I'm not super concerned about that here simply because um, all my stuff is two prong, you know, they're Christmas lights, so they don't have a ground. So the ground doesn't really matter in that sense, but anything that does have a ground, of course, you'll need to provide that ground. All right, so now we've got our wires inserted, and uh, one thing you'll notice is I didn't strip very long coming back on these wires, and I should have stripped longer, really. Um, always leave yourself extra space more than you need. The other thing you're going to note is where the wires actually go into the terminal block. Um, it's got to be very clean. You don't want to, if you have any wire hanging out, if you can see any copper, you need to restrip that so that there's no copper showing. Because if that shorts against the wire that's next to it, you're going to fry your, your circuit board and that's, that's no good. Now what I'm doing is I'm just stripping a little bit of additional wire. Um, I needed a little bit of a few jumpers because I didn't really strip my wires long enough. And um, we'll need those in a couple places to um, not only make my wiring a little neater, but also I've got to do a little bit of an offshoot to an extra plug so that I can provide the 12 volt power that I need to my board. Now, if I had a 12 volt power supply that didn't require a wall plug, I could just wire hardwire to it, but I don't have that. So back to the assembly. I'm just going to go ahead here and tie all the grounds together for the AC cords. And I'm also going to tie the neutrals together because as we see from our manual for this particular DMX relay, the uh, neutral again does not need to pass through the, the unit itself. It just gets all tied together. So the neutral for the power supply and the neutral for all the outputs just all gets tied together. You can use a wire nut. There's other ways to do this. Just Make sure that the wire nut you're using is large enough for the amount of wires that you're putting into it. That's the biggest thing. And of course, that there's no uh, wire hanging out. This is as good of a time as any to remind you that anything electrical is um, your own liability. I'm teaching you here, showing you how I did it. Um, but if you don't feel electrically competent, please, 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 please hire a professional to do it. Or find a friend who is an electrician or electrically savvy i can't be liable for any damages caused by um you working with electricity as always you know when i'm working with electricity here and in any other video the power is always off when i'm touching wires i've always got it fully unplugged and disconnected and i verify that now i'm going to go ahead as i discussed before and i'm going to strip a female power connector so that i can wire in my 12 volt power supply again if if you have a 12 volt power supply that is just hardwired, you can skip this step and, and just tie all the wires together uh, for the hot and neutral, of course, coming into the box. These are not, this is, you want to grab those wires and, and split them off to your power supply before um, the relay or else things won't work. All right, so now I've gone ahead, I've got all my wires in the box. I've got some jumpers in there to keep my wiring cleaner uh, for the input. And so now, I've already inserted my switched power wires into the terminal block, which is the uh, first, third, and fifth. And then I'm going to go ahead, of course, first and third, because I'm just using two channels of it. And now I'm going to go ahead and, and put the actual live wires in the second and fourth terminals. Um, keep in mind, of course, power is completely off here, and I'll just tighten those down. So now we're gonna go ahead, this is my 12 volt power supply, just a plain Jane wall wart. Uh, it doesn't need to have a lot of power because it's really just turning on the electronics that, that run the relays. It's not providing power to the lights itself. Um, and so in this particular use, so therefore um, just a simple 12 volt power supply, it could be 12 to 24 volts. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get that wired in to the uh, terminals described in the diagram. If for any reason you don't know which wire is which on your power supply, you don't know which one's the positive and which one is the negative, go ahead and grab an electrical meter. A simple one will work. Mine's a little fancier, but uh, really you don't need much here. Put it on volts and DC, and then just hook it up to those two terminals with the power on. 
Uh, you'll see either when you'll want to make sure your positive probe is on the positive uh, terminal and your negative probe is on the terminal that's supposed to be negative. Um, and do test this before you turn on your relay. And what you're going to see is either if you see positive 12 volts or 24 or whatever your power supply is or something about there, you're good. If you see negative, that means your wires are switched and you need to turn off power, switch your wires, and then check it again and you'll be good. Now it's time to go ahead and wire our DMX. Now, I particularly am just for testing hooking this up to a stage lighting console software. And so um, I'm using a regular DMX cable that I just chopped in half so that I had a bare end and I have the console at. Now, in, in this for, with this, you've got a shield, a ground, and you've got a positive and a negative. And you can check a simple DMX wiring diagram, which I'll pop up here, that will show you um, that pin 3, the pin that is down on the XLR plug, is the positive. Pin 2 is the negative. You can check which wire is which in your case and hook them up accordingly. If you're going straight from a Christmas light style controller, then your DMX plug is probably... A RJ45, you can run that signal over a network cable and um, just ensure that you hook everything up. You get all the pins properly uh, hooked up yourself. And then you'll be good to go. Of course, if it doesn't work, nothing's going to be damaged by hooking up DMX wrong. You'll just need to switch the, the pins so that you get it right. So let's go ahead. We're going to plug that guy in. Uh, I didn't have a cable gland at the time on hand for the DMX cable, so I didn't run it through that. It's just going to come out of the top of the box for now, which of course is not waterproof. You'll want to make sure to get it through a proper cable gland uh, when you're doing it for real. And we got to set the dip switches now. So by default, out of the box, this one came set in a test mode, okay? I refer to the manual to see what all these do, and um, I'm going to set it to DMX mode. So the first thing that I will do is I'm going to go ahead and turn off all those dip switches. Now I'm going to go ahead for DMX address one. I just need the first switch down again. Check your manual because even if you buy the same product um, that I did, it might have changed due to the fact that it's imported direct from China. And that happens. Once you got that going, pull all your cables through as much as you need to through your cable glands. Tighten those guys up to make everything nice and waterproof. And uh, we're ready to close the box and test it. And so there we have it, all put together, plug in our stuff, and we're good to go. Now, I'm going to turn this off because it's getting a little bit annoying. So it really is that simple. If you want to build your own controller box for a basic uh, setup to be able to turn on and off your regular Christmas lights. Again, if, if you're going to do lots of channels, you know, you might want to buy something off the shelf. But if you just need a couple channels of Christmas lights and you don't mind getting your hands dirty, then this is a great option that can be done really affordably. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe here to Learn Christmas Lighting on YouTube. And also check us out at LearnChristmasLighting.com. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks.